empirical or observable. But what we can say, when the, when the universe came into existence and we had all these elements, helium, hydrogen, we had protons, electrons, neutrons, they were all as a construct of this massive blast which apparently took place. But what perpetuated that? Did it have a conscious will? Did it have a mind? Did it have a reasoning? So we say that it's, it's impossible by just uh, theorizing that something that does not exist then comes into existence that is by definition too far-fetched. So there has to be something which is eternal, which has made this exist. Otherwise, you get the problem of infinite regression, whereby who created that being to create that and it will go on forever. And we will not even come into the present if it goes on forever. So like, for example, as you're a teacher, you would know that we, one cannot traverse infinity. So by this definition, we say that there's something has to be outside of the universe, cannot be contingent upon the universe, and must be independent. The universe could have been any way. The fact it's a particular way tells us that something which is independent of those things has indeed set this all in motion. So therefore, asking the question of who, be, who created God becomes redundant due to the fact that this is an infinite chain of events that carries on, and that we would never have come here in the present. Does that make sense? I know I'm rambling yeah, no, 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 it's on. It's a good point. I mean, I, I, my, my question now would be like, why your God then? Fantastic point. So what we say in essence, that, that one being has to, by definition, be singular. It cannot be a multiplicity of different gods because then you would say, well, who created that god, who created that god, who created that god? So it has to be something unique, arbitrary and just singularly by itself. So then what we say is that all the world's religions, if this is really interesting, as you're a teacher of, um, of students, that in fact, if you look at all the world's scriptures, it's very fascinating. They actually speak about one god who is unlike his creation. So God is neither a man, woman, idol or statue. What happens then, my friend? is essentially the within these scriptures third party narratives become become ubiquitous what do i mean if you look at the new testament for example as you made mention your father's converted to, into catholicism now we get a multiplicity of different authors who write the new testament each espousing certain theologies which they're seeking to propel but for example are you aware that jesus in the new testament never ever claims to be god he simply claims to be a prophet who was sent by God. So what happened then was that later eulogies of Christ be became invoked within the first three, four centuries of Christianity. And then only in the year 451, so you're talking about full 400 plus years after Christ, that the, the, uh, the um, affirmation of the Trinity became sacrosanct and stamped in Christian history. But early Christians, they fought furiously amongst themselves as to who Jesus was. So what I'm basically saying is that if you look at all the world scriptures, they especially espouse God is one, but what then happens is within these world scriptures, they then make the major protagonist the, to being God. So Jesus became God for the Christians, Ram, Vishnu, Krishna for the Hindus, although they don't ever claim, make the claim that they're God Almighty. This is a very fundamental point to observe. Listen up, right? There's a lot of noise, right? And I, I, I personally find that the closest I get to any kind of real idea of what the world is like is when there's nothing there at all. Take my eyes. It's just, just silence, just being. That's as close as I'll ever get. And, and I, I feel like, uh, I'd love to keep this with us, all right? Of course. I feel like the more words come bombarding in me, the more I spin, spin off, spin off, spin off into But we're just like trying to reason. It's not, um, yeah, now, but in yeah, terms of creation, you see, because yeah. I did ask initially about, yeah, yeah. Um, do you believe in a creator? And you were a bit hesitant. So I just made mention that there's more of a possibility than, it's more probable than improbable, based upon the points that are raised. So something for you to reflect upon. In addition to that leaflet, we're giving out free Korans in English as well. Okay. Would you like a copy? Free of charge. I, well, what I've, I haven't got anything to carry it with. We're going to so give you a little carry. We'll give you a carrier I'll be, bag. I'll be coming back that way. Okay. Um, so I'll come back. No problem. We've got a carrier bag for your attention that's, as well. That's okay. You can I'll use it. I'll carry it around with me now. I'm no really problem. Going popping over and then I'll come back. No, no problem. So that's fine. No problem. I mean, I hope I found, you found some of the points yeah, no, informative and nice speaking to you. Please do pop by again. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. So a very pleasant conversation with this young teacher who uh, teaches young children as, as obviously what a teacher does. So we inshallah will be looking at him, him returning and uh, coming back and then discussing um, with us further. So he was interested. I think some of the points resonate. The heart then becomes compelled to the points that are raised. So may Allah as, as well guide him and hopefully he returns shortly and we can try to delve in further into this discussion. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.
Good afternoon to you. Free information Islam. Muslim. Are you Muslim? 